an amazing instrument and has developed into an incredible voice in today's music. So many types of guitars, so many styles of playing, all sorts of gear. How does one make their voice be heard as a guitarist? My name is Jeff Floro and welcome to All About Guitar, where we talk tone, we talk technique, we talk gear. Where we discover how we can become better musicians in a world of constantly changing technologies. Where we take a good look at everything guitar. And sometimes not exactly guitar, but just as important. So we can be more successful as a musician in today's music scene. So sit back and relax, and let's explore all about guitar. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to All About Guitar. We have a great show for you tonight. I'm very happy to have back on the show... Michael Yost. Michael, thanks for coming down. It's really good to have you back. Thanks to, for having me, Jeff. It's always an honor to be here. And uh, besides uh, being a great guitar player and a great artist, and we're going to listen to his newest uh, release, we're going to go through it and talk about it, he also has a his own radio show, uh, Radio Venice. And uh, give him a little bit of info before we start on that. Radio Venice is a show um, out of my recording studio in Venice Beach, all live, all good, all the time. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to my crew, Ray Stanton, my co-producer, my co-host Tonin, and my co-noise maker, um, Barry Conley. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Please check in RadioVenice.tv. Um, and we're inspired like people like you making radio, talking about music, bringing music out there is a good one. And he has a better location. I, I mean, we're okay in the valley. We have a nice view here, but he's got <laughs> the view of the ocean. It's great. Anyway, um, you had just released a new album, and if I can pronounce it right, it's Cirque de, Cirque de Guitar? Cirque de Guitar, yeah. It means, Cirque. it's French, means Circus of Guitars. Or, okay. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what you were, let's get a little bit into the concept, what you were trying to do in this new album, because it's quite different from some of the other stuff that you've done. True. You know, this is album number five of my solo albums right now, and most of them are really um, a lot of, some of them are orchestrated, but um, just recently, the last two, I was really on one instrument, mostly Miss Lucy, mm -hmm. and just playing it, and also like, like I do the songs live. This time, um, I allowed myself to orchestrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. I felt like, how about I make an orchestra out of Miss Lucy? So the first song of the album, Cirque de Guitar, is basically like the circus. So Lucy, there's a lot of Miss Lucy's going on, playing with themselves mm -hmm. and so um, like I would write for an orchestra but there was a lot of fun and some of it is I also got a little bit I love psychedelic music I love rock and roll all this stuff I allowed myself to not do one or the other to blend it a little bit and that was also the idea I just I went free and made a crazy studio album oh, okay well let me play a clip let me play the title track Cirque, uh, Cirque de G G my French is terrible. Cirque de guitar. I don't Cirque, even... Cirque de guitar. I don't know how to So play. let me play this because, yeah, there's a lot of guitars on here. Yeah, it's And fun. it's kind of interesting what you're doing. I was trying to figure out how you, what you were doing, but all of this is basically Miss Lucy? It's all Miss Lucy. Also like the the whole percussion stuff. So with the nails and the tapping plate. So so um, I doubled a couple times. Oh, this just turned out to be like a snare drum or something. Mm -hmm. There's a heartbeat in there. But um, otherwise, it's all guitar. It's all done with the guitar. All right. Well, here, here's the title track. Take a listen. Thank you.
Now, there's <laughs> there's a lot of guitars in there. So I forgot, yeah, there's also distorted bass in there. Yeah, so what were you using? How did you do that? Um, I'm, I have an old Fender jazz bass, mm -hmm. and I usually overdrive. Um, when I record it direct, I overdrive the input. I have a tube preamp, an old mm -hmm. PV tube preamp, and I just crank it and just compress it a lot. And oh, so, okay, so that's tube distortion. It is tube distortion, yeah. Um, so what... That is kind of like part of my philosophy. If you have a lot of distorted guitars, you need a clean bass under it. When you have clean acoustic guitars, a distorted fuzz bass makes it beautiful. It gives it like a warm bed and the acoustics, they sit nice in there. So that's what happened there. It does work. I mean, it's interesting when you hear it by yourself, it's like, wow, that thing's cranked. That thing is distorted. But when you hear it in the background, it depends what kind of distortions need to be warm and it's need to be nice uh, compressed. So, um, so it, a fuzz sound works really well, I, in particular against beautiful acoustic guitars. It sets like a nice contrast and makes the beautiful acoustic guitars even more beautiful if you have the fuzz bass against it. Yeah. So that's that's what I like in the mix to do that. Now, when you're the opening part, when they're, you know, that thing, the after a, a couple of times, then there's this real low end. Is that the bass or is that the guitars? That's a that's the bass. The bass. So it's playing that's, because it... Uh, was that a problem with the fuzz bass getting the low end, or because usually when you distort, you lose top end and low end? Oh no, um, it's it's okay. I have plenty. You yeah. know, I, <laughs> it, it's I, there. I, I mean, I didn't there. I didn't put it through a, a amp particular. It goes di, so I have a lot of low end mm -hmm. available there, and then you you tweak it a little bit with the EQ. But you will see if you have if you there's not so much EQing actually going on. If the acoustic guitar sounds right, it's mic right, and the mm -hmm. bass is right, it all falls in place. How did how did you mic the guitars? The, um, you know, I have this um, like it's a large membrane condenser microphone, old CAD mic. That's usually what I use. Mm -hmm. And use it about like two, three feet from the guitar away. You know, Miss Lucy sounds really good. So you just don't want to come too close mic. Particular acoustic guitars too close mic. I feel like takes the soul away. You got to go a little. You bit You got to let it breathe. Yeah. Yeah, let it breathe where it sounds good for your ear. That's where I put the mic. Now. You recorded this both here and in Germany, correct? Yes. yes. So, um, is the room really live, or is it? Uh, is how did you? Do you have a real live room that you record in, or? You know, it's a it's a um, my live studio where we also do the Radio Venice show. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my trick is I put many many guitars out and have mm -hmm. them around. They create a nice overtones. It's like a Helmholtz resonator. So. Um, the reflections in the room, the room is a really good sounding room, there's a window and then it's it's a bit lively, but um, also like having many instruments around that creates nice overtones, right. harmonic overtones, kind of tuning the room, that makes a big difference. Right, and, and it must have made a difference with all those layers because if it's too reverberant, it can get in the way. Yeah, the thing is about this, uh, most of this on this album, it's pretty dry. You know, particular with these guitars, I like them to have a natural room. I, I'm not really a big fan of digital uh, plug-in reverbs, right? You can make them sound all right. You can make, but you know, um, I'm not a big fan. I This is also this album, if you listen to it on the headphones, a lot of it, it's like, these are a lot of guitars, but they're like in that room, right? Right, right. It's pretty present. It's, so it's pretty present. Otherwise, you then it would just wash away and you would lose all that. Thing. Now, also too, I heard in the background, when it started getting more orchestral, did you speed up the guitar? Because it sounds like the classical's like really high, or did you just play that? No, that's just like basically. A... No, but I mean the the riff. Da -da -dun -dun -dun, it sounds like there's an octave above it. Yeah, but I played it. I played oh. it. Also, nothing is nothing is sped up. I just played it. That wow, because that's pretty high up there. That would sound. You know, um, no, it's not. It's not that high. It's it's not. Um, it's not it's not pitched or anything. Oh, okay. No, thing. it sounded great. I mean, it was like the octave thing really works. It, it, it was up here. I just have to look for it right now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's all right. right. No, no, but all of this is played. I didn't didn't do anything. And like you see, uh, what I see, uh, what I heard also, there was a heartbeat. I just made myself this heartbeat out of a djembe that I cued, and I use this in a lot of my music. It's just bomb, bomb. I just got this, you know, from working with um, with African music you know, that mm -hmm. that makes it really or funk. To, so I have this in there, and that's the only thing that's kind of bomb bomb programmed. The rest was all like tapping with the finger. So yeah, no, it's the percussion part of it. Using the guitar as a percussion really worked. Yeah. It was really good. Now, before we go into more songs, for the people that are not familiar, tell us a little bit about Miss Lucy. Oh, yeah. Miss Lucy is um, my main love. Um, 
She's built by Tomas Delgado for Can Candela's guitar. I got a few of his guitars. These are the best guitars ever. I got her like many years ago and I traveled with her quite a bit and she's incredible. She has her own personal voice. I'll play with her a little bit later. And she's all over this album. Mm -hmm. She's also in a... It also works well with, a, with electric guitars and everything, but this is... It's a flamenca. It's a, it's a negra. It's got a cedar top and um, rosewood sides compared to Blanca, which is a spruce top and cypress back and sides. Mm -hmm. So, and... Um, you know, it was a so first... What, that's rosewood and, and cedar? Cedar top. Cedar top and rosewood. So, originally... The traditional flamenco guitars back in the days were all blancas. They had spruce top and cypress back and sides, right? And then later, actually the one that really started was Paco de Lucia. He started doing some things in flamenco that um, was a little bit against the rules, including having a cedar top on the guitar. So, and then, then when the negra started, it has a little bit darker sound. It's a little bit more a combination between a flamenca and the classical guitar. The classical guitars mostly have cedar tops, a lot of them. So you have a little, bit, a little bit more also next to the grind. You also have the warm sound for the more little. What's is it the bracing that's different between this and a regular classical? What's the difference? Um, the top is I'm the top is much thinner. Right. Oh, okay. So to have, and there's, uh, as, as far as I heard about it, it's a secret. It, it goes to really, really tiny, tiny fractions of a millimeter right. about how thick and what they're doing. So it's, it's a rather thin top. Um, what it also is, the, the bracing might be different. I don't know totally, but also like the, the action of the guitar is lower. And, you know, while you um, try on a classical guitar to no, have no fret noise at all, it's in here, almost like a built-in distortion, like yeah. you have also by African music. So you have you have that rasp in there. So now, does this uh, do the uh, flamencas tend not to have as much sustain as a classical, or do you? It sounds like that guitar you can hold the note on it. Pretty yeah, well. this has a super sustain. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of the pure flamenco guitars are like very. It's like almost a rhythm instrument. Right, right, yeah, right. You know, so like they're really sharp and and present, and they have a really high attack. So this is a little bit of a hybrid, I would say, because this has a beautiful sustain. But of course, the the higher the action and the bigger the the volume of the body, the longer sustain you have. Oh, okay. That's a whole nother show we can do with Thomas. He can tell you much more yes. about it. Thomas is a genius. If you listen here, Thomas, um, I'm going to see him on Thursday. He's a great friend. He opened a whole nother door of guitar playing whole nother, since I met Let him. Let uh, Thomas know it's it, he's overdue to come back. So and then, He was here course, before, right? Yes, he's been here before, but you might as well come and hang with us if he comes down. Um, Candela's guitars have been around, just so uh, if you don't are not familiar with them. They are a, a institution or a, a part of history of of, Cal of Los Angeles, and Absolutely. they've been here from I think the early the turn of the 1900s. It's yeah. something like that. Started with his grandfather, and one of the most famous um, creations that they made is they made the original um, Mickey Mouse guitar that was used on the Mickey Mouse Club. Yes, and sure, he, yeah. when he was here last time, he was talking and he showed us some of the the. Uh, the designs and sketches that he made. He made four of them, I think, for for Disney, and it was a four-string um, uh, tenor guitar, and it was uh, it's amazing. I mean, but he's his guitars are uh, Jose Feliciano, I think, is another one that uses. There's a major artist use that all the time. They're beautiful. I, I played beautiful guitars all over the world. No one could beat his guitars. I yes, no, they're they're definitely they're beautiful. I changed my life. So anyway, that's the, that's the story on them. So check them out uh, at, at Candelas Guitars. You can uh, Google them and find them on uh, their website. Beautiful stuff. And uh, check him out. And he's local, so if you're in LA, you can go visit the shop, and they, it's a really neat, it's a real neat experience. I'm gonna play another one now. I think this is the one. This is one of the songs that you did both places. That you did some of it here and some over there. Um, this is interesting because I'll let him tell the story about it. Uh, let me play the clip and then I'll let you explain. This okay. is called Falling in Time. 
And there's some interesting stuff that's going on in here that he's doing. And um, I'll, I'll play it first and then we'll just dig into it a little more. Here's Falling in Time. play that that ending <laughs> these songs are much longer i'm pulling little clips and i'm just trying to show some of the things but there's so i love the psychedelia where he's doing the backward stuff and he's doing a lot of interesting things there but let's talk a little bit because there's a church bell in there yeah so um, that is um i told you earlier you know um i have been recently recording a little bit here in venice in the studio in, in germany mm-hmm. um at my family's home i have a little studio now as well when i'm over there so these are songs that are kindly recorded over there, mixed here, or the other way around. This particular song, Falling in Time, it's kind of like, it, it has a bit of the mood of earlier times, like a déjà vu or something. And um, this is um, the church bell actually of a church at my hometown in Germany, right? And so and I, I thought they sounded really great, and they they're give this kind of like weird emotion, and I wanted to make music around it. So what I did... I took the church bell and I um, put this as basis of the track. So the church bell was first. That was the rhythm. It's actually 60 beats per second, 60 beats per minute. So BPM 60 and then just like also the church bell is A440. So it was super easy. I just had to. Oh, it was automatic. It was already. You didn't have to correct it. I didn't even have to correct it. So it was 440. And so then I had to start put this in there and started playing along. You know, um, the piano is um, um, an old mini baby grand slightly out of tune at my mom's house mm-hmm. you know, this, i like the slightly out of tune part of it makes it much better than a sample keyboard so i played the piano and then miss lucy of course is on there and so that was a basic track and then it had this um, kind of somewhat haunting melody and in the end i just had to um just give it this extra the psychedelic part it's just you know i'm, I'm a huge pink floyd fan and all that kind of stuff you know also these records are basically um my I, I can't even say how often I listen to these records. So that's all in there. So um, some of that, the really like dark um, trembling stuff is big piano chords, um, the, the dissonant piano chords, and I turned them around. So what you hear, you hear the decay of first going to the attack. So, so you flip them, they're backwards, I flip, reverse. They, I flip them, they're backwards, reverse. But the good part is with these big, piano chords you know it, it comes out of nothing it feels really good and then in the end you hear this little in the uh, talk there's a tube tape echo i have a full tone tube tape echo i'm not sure if you know this they're wonderful you know it's like a echoplex but a more modern, modern is it a version. vincent no, echorec no a full tone oh it's a full tone oh it's a it's a newer one full yeah tone. full tone it's a newer one it's a great machine um i love this one um, a lot of the reverbs and a lot of echoes on there actually are not digital plugins. They're that full tone. It's like a um, 
a um, little bit of Echoplex on steroids. It has it has the uh, tape. It has tape and so it it looks like an Echoplex, but it's it's just there. It it has tape and it has tubes in there and everything. Mm -hmm. And the good thing you can overdrive the tape and all that kind of stuff. So I I had a lot of fun with this. So and that is part of it in there too. So. To, uh, yes, it is easy to reverse something in Pro Tools and just play reverse. It's not as complicated as it used to be. But I still know to do how it on tape, and I love doing that. Uh, it's not. So yes, it's a little more. Involved. It's a little bit more involved, but it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I do like that. So I had to give it like this ending. Now, where did you re- when you recorded the church bell? Did you record in the church or outside? Outside, okay. just just walking by. I was with a friend, and we were just going to a restaurant. And the church was just ringing. It was six o'clock, and then cell phone up. And recorded it. It sounds good. I mean, it's yeah. pretty. F- the fidelity is great. It sounds really good. You know, um, if you really listen to it in the beginning, you can hear a little bit wind in there. So it's yeah. a real thing. So it was not, and, and it was a small little church, but uh, all these churches um, are really old. So you know, moving to America so many years ago. Now, um, I'm not necessarily a religious person, but I like churches for the culture and the art and everything, and also the sounds and everything. So um, I'm rather fascinated now since everything is so new here. In America, I like. Yeah, I they, they're there. electronic. Uh, a lot of them are electronic bells. They don't have the. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That yeah. thing sounds huge for a small church. Yeah, it's it's good. It came out. It was like mm. in this. Uh, you know, the houses were reflecting it a bit. So. Is it like in a square? So there's yeah, like, yeah. Bit, so you're getting an eight, you're getting a good reverb yeah. out of it. That's that's kind of fun. So all the backwards stuff was the piano backwards. The, all the piano. Yeah, there was a piano backwards. Um, yeah, there was just a piano. The piano. Backwards. Okay. Now I'm gonna play another one. That's again. There's a lot of different things. The album's pretty eclectic. It goes in a lot of different directions. This one I liked a lot. This one has slide guitar in it. This is called the Sad and the Beautiful. Kind of feels to me like a Cajun type of. The thing is, what happened there? This is the first time I played actually glass slide on the Spanish oh, really? guitar on a classic guitar. Oh, okay. That's Miss Lucy the slide. So I tried to. Oh, Miss Lucy's doing the slide on that. Yeah, uh, that's the first time I tried that. That's great. All right. Well, here, take a listen to this. That was interesting. Those birds, was that? So these birds are little birdies in my hometown. Okay. Everything is recorded in, in Venice, but the little birdies are from my hometown. So you just, you did a, a specific recording of them? Or you know, was that leakage? Was that leakage to your No, no, no. Sometimes I'm running around and with a phone and I hear something like birds or a little river or like the church bells and just turn it on and then and I you like start it. recording. And, and I start recording. And then I know they're going to come in useful at some point. So, and this, at this point, it, it got so dark and so on, and I felt like, oh, I got this little bird sample, you know, that, mm-hmm. and they're not really samples, you know, that you go, you know, you can get on your internet, on YouTube, try find birds, there's a million. Um, I try to make all these recordings by myself and use them in the music, right? Well, it's great, because that, they, they, they sound, they sound kind of unique. I mean, 
most of the a, a sound effects library sounds like a sound effects library. Yeah, yeah, you can't do it. You yeah. have to make it yourself. Yeah, yeah, it makes it more. Yeah, it's Absolutely. more personable. Absolutely. Now, um, how many guitars? How many Miss Lucys are in there? In On that? this one, you know, because there are the, more than one doing slide, right? Yes. So check out. So that guitar sounds so dark um, because um, I tuned the guitar down. It's like an open D tuning. Mm -hmm. It's like a dad get, but it doesn't have the third in there. I just have to, it's just D's and A's, D's and A's. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and basically, so this is the main riff, so on Miss Lucy, and then uh, there's two slide guitars on there. What there's in the bottom, there's also, beat, the heartbeat is in there again. You can hear boom, boom, it's in there. And then that's the only time I barely ever use real keyboards. There's a keyboard in there. What I'm playing There's there, a synth in there. It is a, it's a Memotron. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, which belonged to a friend of mine. He let me use it, and it was just too good sounding. So Memotron is like a Mellotron, but it's a German company. They do uh, like a digital version of it. So you have all the different forms of the Mellotron. I'm a big fan of the uh, Mellotron, the real Mellotron. So that's not a real one, but you could, like the choir and the strings and everything, you could also blend this, what you couldn't do with the original. So this is, um, I was so intrigued by that sound. That yeah, the Memotron uh, also too is, is it's the go-to, uh, it's not tape anymore, it's all digital, but that type of sampling is, uh, they're used a lot. The Moody Blues actually use the Memotron now. They don't use the Mellotron. I, the Memotron is great. Yes. I have to say, I'm not really a big fan of digital keyboards, but that one was fun. Um, it was just in my studio for a little while. Oh, so okay. Use it. It's not mine. Next so. time you get over there and you try it, see if he has the uh, 18 strings per note Genesis strings that they used on uh, the the reissue of uh, in Genesis Revisited. This is it to use it on Watcher of the Skies. It's the hugest sounding chords you'll ever hear in your life. It's just see. monstrous. That thing is a monster. <clears throat> yes, but there was a filter sweet type of thing, type of a sound. Wasn't that a synth? Yeah, but you, there's a there's a tone knob on the Memotron. Oh, you're doing that and, with the Memotron so and opening it up. And opening okay. up that filter. And so and that, that gave that sound. So I did this live while it was happening. Oh, okay. So Because you have that going on in the low the low end too. But is there also the bass? No, I don't think there's a bass on that. That's a bass. That's all from the memo. Track. It's all from the memo. It's track. great. It's yeah. really a great sound. Yeah, I couldn't. So <clears throat> that song actually was done. I, I, I fucked around with the memo. Track. Oh, sorry. I played around with the memo. Track. And then the, the low tuning and stuff. And that kind of it. And I played a little slide on it. This. You know, some of these on this one are a little bit, they come out of experiments. You, mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. you know, the falling in time was inspired by the church. This one was inspired by the Memotron. Right? Ah. The, the first one was inspired by the name Circus. So I wanted Miss Lucy to be a circus, you know. So that, well, it's so interesting that. because the, the tone you're getting out of the, using the slide on Miss Lucy, it gets more of like a dobro type of sound. It's more wooden. Yes. And it sounds really nice, but like some of that stuff that I've heard from the south in Louisiana, some of the slide stuff, it had that feel to it. It only works on this one with a glass slide. Mm -hmm. it does not, um, I like the brass for the steel strings, right? But um, for the, um, I've not really seen it much being on it. There's a guy, he does a fretless um, classic guitar. I don't have his name. I think he's from Turkey or something, incredible. And he plays fretless um, nylon strings and he also uses slide. Mm -hmm. That, that was a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember his name. No, but I mean the tone is just, it's, so I, there's two slide guitars. Is there two just kind of like whatever type of a rhythm type of? So, you know, the rhythm, I just can't use it because this guitar is not Miss Lucy, but it's that kind of tuning, so I can show you. It's like. It's a little bit harder to play here, but this is, there was a basic kind of like. Something like that. It was done on Miss Lucy, but it, that kind of tuning right. and that thing. So that was a basic rhythm guitar. I did this, and then the slides came on top of it. Mm -hmm. and like, and then, The, the G and the B string, they're tuned the same. 
Yeah, so you get like a drone string. It gives like a nice chorus effect. So that's the kind of fun part. So that, but yeah. I did this, what I usually do here on Goya, I did this on Miss Lucy on that track. Well, while we're, you have the Goya out, we might as well cover it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this guitar. Yeah. This is a guitar. Um, I got it as a gift from a friend uh, many years ago here in Los Angeles. He bought it for $60 at the pawn shop. So um, that is actually um, a Goya acoustic guitar F11. This mm -hmm. was a folk series. It was built 1957 in Sweden. And they were made for the American market to compete with Levin and all these kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're uh, um, incredible guitar. Guitars, so uh, for a while you could get them rather cheap. Now people are looking for them, and so this one, my friend um, didn't really totally knew what he had. So when before he gave it to me, he thought it's cool to put a couple of holes in there and you know to rough it up a little bit. But in the end, what happened is he took the paint off the top, which opens it up. It's really nice and bright. Um, I like this, and then I just started using it. It has almost like a classical thing, and it has an incredible tone. Now, now guitar sounds like this. I love your truss rod cover. <laughs> I don't think that's stock. So what that is, um, when um, when I was 15, right. my aunt won the lottery, and she took my sister and me to Kenya. Oh, wow. So this is actually real ebony. That was when it still was legal to get little things from ebony. So that's from that vacation. I have this little, um, this little ebony thing. And is I that ebony or ivory? Ivory. Ivory. Okay. ivory. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay, that's I, okay. I, ivory, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that's beautiful. I meant beautiful. to say that. <laughs> that is beautiful. Let me so that's a trust word cover. Let me that's get closer. From you got it. This is too good. There we go. So that's a, I don't even think it has a trust word. <laughs> now, is that, what pickup is it? So that's a um, Candela's um, pickup, put it in there. So I have two pickups in there. I have one that is a um, under saddle pickup, a piezo. Mm -hmm. and then I have this, and so with this switch, I can switch these two. And so, and oh, so, you can one or the other. One or the other. So what's what's kind of cool is if you uh, play more slide, more you want to more like if, if I want to play this to an electric guitar amp, I probably use this pickup, right? Okay. While when I go through the PA, I'm going to use mm -hmm. the piezo, and it's it's a mighty sound. It's got a, a great I, sound. I have a few Goyas, you know. I also have a Goya mandolin. Um, so um, they're incredible instruments, right? But this one are they still made? Or are they, so this got sold um, late '60s to the Martin Guitar Company, Goya, and they started building Goya instruments in Japan under the name Goya, right? So there, there's Goya instruments still from that period, but they're less valuable. What you want is the ones that be like late '50s or early '60s have been made in Sweden. They're all um, really incredible. That was that. Is that a mahogany back inside with a spruce top? No, actually, I'm not totally sure. To be honest, I'm not totally it sure. It looks like a looks a mahogany neck. Yeah, I don't know what that back is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's rosy. But God, it has that sound though. It sounds great. Yeah, it's good. You know, that's, um, there's lots of, um, also when I record in the studio, people come with a lot of really expensive Martins and Taylors and everything. And then sometimes when they record with me, it's like, hey, try one of mine for things. And the Goya always ends up on there somewhere. Yeah. No, it's got a and really the, nice, so also, it, the overtones on it. Just for, for recording, also I like um, guitars with smaller bodies better. You know, they have a little, they're more to, uh, able to control in the bass, and they're just cut really beautiful. Yeah. Well, especially if you're layering, that stays in the pocket better. Yeah, I have, I have a, um, on this, I got this album called California Burning, and she's like on there all, mm -hmm. there's like, there's a song called Goya's Revenge, mm -hmm. 
And so she's on there, and then I have her, and then the Goya mandolin on there. So it's kind of fun. That's nice. That's a great guitar. Yeah, it's good, yeah. For 60 bucks. Okay, well, let's move on. There's more to do. There's yeah, more yeah, to sure. talk about. The next cut I'm going to play is The Show Must Go On. Oh, wow. And this is the one um, where, well, I'll play it first, and then we'll okay. tell everybody what, because what, each song is like a surprise, what he does sonically. He's doing all different sorts of things in each of the songs, and it's fascinating how he's recording this. So here's the show must go on. Take a listen, then we'll discuss. <laughs> some really wild stuff that you're doing in that song so kind of break out a little bit what the what's going on in there the the basic of us all is still is miss lucy right i'm, I'm playing <laughs> was go big on this so it's a, I have a couple of these and it's like really mm -hmm. per percussive stuff this is where Miss Lucy really can cut through there's a big drum set Andy Kravitz is playing big rock and roll drums on there mm -hmm. right? so um, that has to cut through things so I had to work with this this was the most work of all the songs since there was so much going on to make it uh, work as a mix right because mm -hmm. a bunch of guitars going on making these drums that are really big but so you still have the acoustic guitars cut through there's also distorted bass, of course, on there. Mm -hmm. And then um, Maddie D, Matthew Demerit, is playing beautiful baritone saxophone on there. So this was a little bit inspired how Dave Bowie does this. In a lot of his songs, he had, instead of heavy guitar chords, he had saxophones stacked to just kick in in a chorus. And so since I had all these Spanish guitars on there, um, it wouldn't have worked to put distorted guitars to make this more heavy. So um, this is a fortunate to have people like Maddie D in my neighborhood. He came by and mm -hmm. played. There's, bad, there's four big baritone saxophones playing these chords uh, in the chorus, and then he played a crazy ass solo too. And yeah, well, the the uh, I heard the 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 baritone doing that that bass line. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Which is kind of a King Crimson type yeah, of thing. It, it's very progressive, and then. He's doing a little solo, but if you listen carefully, if you listen back to the show, he's um, he got you got those chords in there. I was trying to figure out what was going on in there. I mean, I recognized the sax when it did yeah. the little line, but I, it was hard to tell what kind of how is he getting that sound because it sounds distorted, but it's not really distorted. It's not really distorted. You know, I mean the 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 acoustic guitars, um, the the Spanish guitars, are run them through a compressor. So they're really press and um, Miss Lucy get the sound with the two so it's gonna but it was a challenge, I have to say, to to make it sure so you can hear everything and it's not cluttered up and everything. So I, I did quite some mixing. I finished this this December. I was with my family in Germany, I had to spend some time. I spent a week 
just wow fine-tuning that mix did every... you have a difficult time with the berry and the fuzz bass um you know i mean you, it's clean i can hear the two you will you will you will have to work on it you know you have to you have to find um the spot for each instrument to be in so they're not covering it up so what what was for me the most challenging part i wanted to keep the percussive stuff of the um spanish guitar in there and so so have it loud and up front almost like a like a flamenco tune right but still work with the drums so that that took some work right yeah no but, it's a it's a great mix but i mean it's pretty it's pretty heavy that's a heavy tune yeah i mean it gets it's interesting so the overall besides uh i'm trying to get an, a feel of how the how the songs is there a, con a concept to the album or is it just a group of songs you know the thing is these songs collected over the last couple of years mm -hmm. for me um being sometimes over there sometimes over here and then always when sometimes happens you know a certain emotion triggers a certain song i just i usually have an idea if it's like a little melody or like the church bell mm -hmm. or whatever so that triggers this so and then i kind of start collecting songs and eventually it becomes an album mm -hmm. right so it is um, the, the larger concept on this one is I'm not going to limit myself to say uh, because um, I definitely I have can prove this very easy that everything I can do I can do live can do by myself but this time was I would do not uh, I wanted to use the studio as an instrument as well right and, right. and so because um, I also love engineering I love I love the whole thing about making mm -hmm. records so and I do this a lot for other people too but this time I said okay I'm not going to make it like all scaled down this time I'm just going to let it all and have right. some fun with it and that that was a concept with it and then how I space the songs after each other it's just it's a feel it's an emotion thing how I think they fit how it how it goes and particularly to keep it interesting mm -hmm. right yeah it's it's definitely you're you're really expanding on your sound palette and um Real quick, to you see me flashing this uh, this uh, tablet. The record's available digitally at uh, Michael's site, guitaryost.com. And Bandcamp. Band and Bandcamp. Bandcamp. So I'm, that's what I'm showing you is the cover. There's there's no CD yet. But anyway, um, I'm going to play one more song before we do the premiere. I just wanted to say something real quick uh, about the Bandcamp. If you downloaded it from there... You can download it high resolution quality, like 24-bit, 48K, just the way I mixed it. Mm -hmm. If you put it to CD, it will be a reduction or like right. MP3. You can do also a small one, but there's, you know, there's a lot of effort has been done to make these sound good, so you can get it full. Right, right. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. That's the good part about that. That it's very no, that's very good that you have the high you have a high res or a higher res version. All right, I'm going to play one other cut before we get to the premiere because right. we're running out of time. Right. And this is another one, some interesting stuff. I'm just going to play it, then we'll talk about it. This one's called The Magic of 12. And uh, take a listen.
That wah guitar is just rude. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, that, that's a trussard. That's uh, a trussard? That's a trussard. One of the old, old Taylor casters. It's a it's a beautiful sounding guitar. James Trussard. And what are you now? You're what are you? Is that a, what amp are you using, or are you using an amp? Yeah, always amps, always amps and mics. So that's a, a Marshall JCM eight hundred, the one that I bought when I was eighteen year old in Germany. It's still the same one, and um, and that was in Germany. In Germany, I bought this one in Germany. I brought this over with me. Oh, it's here. It's, yeah, it's here. Okay. Yeah, it's here. I got that's my my major. I got a few amps, got a few Marshalls, but that's my main Marshall. This view, it's a hundred watt. I pulled out two tubes, so it's two fifty. And um, this is my, um, when I do more of the rock stuff, I use this one, you know, and it's a really great sounding amp. Is that a 4x12 cabinet? No, it's a 212 cabinet. It's an old one. It's an old Marshall, a really tiny one. It's got vintage 30s in there, and it's rocked. It's really rocked. Reinhold Bogner sold this to me like 15 years ago. So for recording, I use a 212. Okay. And that uh, that's the greenbacks or the vintage thirty? Vintage thirties. Vintage thirties. I have a couple of caps also with. Um, I like vintage thirties, but I also like the greenbacks. But this one has vintage thirties. Okay, and then what was the wah? The wah wah is a Morley wah fuzz volume volume wah fuzz. Now, were like, you using the fuzz on it too? Yeah, or you that's, were using that's the fuzz and the wah wah into the Marshall. Okay, into the Marshall. And then fifty seven uh, with a fifty seven mic, and then I go through my setup to preamp and. Compressor. I got like a signal chain, uh, the same signal chain that I use for vocals, for bass, for acoustic guitars, for electric guitars. Mm -hmm. So I just changed the mic. So, oh, it's a great sound. It's just really, really. Now, were there twelve strings in there? Yeah. Okay. Th that's why magic of twelve. The main riff is a twelve string actually tuned down, and that twelve string is a nineteen sixty seven Höfner. Um, seven uh, Hof Höfner Höfner. Yeah. Is that? I don't know this. Hoffner. Okay, that's so, a Hoffner. Yeah. Great sound. That 12 string is a unique sound. Yeah, um, I also, um, I got this as a gift for a long time and usually I like fresh strings. I never replaced the strings. It's still the original strings on there. So when they, you have to be, hit our heart. It sounds great. Listen, we're out of time. Okay. Real quick, give uh, everybody, while you're setting up, uh, where are you playing or what's going on? Uh, give them the uh, the website for Radio Venice again. RadioVenice.tv. Okay. Become our friends. Subscribe to us. And on they're on, you're on every Sunday, right? Every Sunday, 420. We got great music. Yes. Coming up every Sunday. So we had the Delgado Brothers, Stanley, um, Stanley Barons the other day, uh, Sunday, yesterday. So we got good stuff coming up. Now we're going to hear a first-time performance of about 10,000 Miles or More is yeah. the name of it. I, this, this is the stuff I've been playing around the last few weeks. And uh, I finished it up yesterday, so I can play it today. So I had a good week. So I'm going to let him take us out. Everybody have a great week, uh, and we'll see you next week. Thank you again, Michael, for coming down. It's Thank always you, an honor to have you on the it's show. i got to bring you back with uh, with Tomas so we yeah, can talk about to. the guitars. And this is 10,000 Miles or More. <laughs> Thank you.